In order to understand the mechanisms of the universe, it is important to study the different celestial bodies of our solar system in detail. Even though mankind succeeded in setting foot on the moon for the first time more than 50 years ago, space exploration in general is still in its infancy. To erase the white spots from the star map, the space agency NASA regularly carries out unmanned missions. During these missions, space probes are sent out into the vastness of the galaxy, where highly technological equipment then collects important data and images that help researchers gain new insight into the functions of our planetary system. In today's video, we would like to share with you the journey of the Juno spacecraft, which departed for Jupiter several years ago. The information and images obtained so far with the help of the spacecraft have sometimes brought to light important new findings about the fifth planet of our solar system for experts. However, some puzzling phenomena could also be observed on Jupiter, which continues to leave experts with big question marks. But see for yourself. If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. Let the journey to Jupiter begin. The mission of the Juno spacecraft began on August 5, 2011, the date on which Juno began its journey to Jupiter's orbit. Jupiter is again the fifth planet in our solar system and differs significantly from our blue home planet in terms of its composition and gigantic dimensions. The diameter at the equator of Jupiter is an incredible 143,000 kilometers. With these oversized dimensions, the planet, which was named after the supreme god of Roman mythology, it is not only 11 times larger than our Earth, but also the largest planet in our solar system. The mass of Jupiter is mainly composed of helium and hydrogen. Thus, in the world of astronomy, Jupiter is one of the so-called gas giants, which, unlike the Earth, has no solid surface. The distance between Jupiter and the Earth averages 778.6 million kilometers. It took the Juno space probe almost five years to cover this huge distance. On July 5, 2016, NASA staff were finally able to announce the good news that Juno had made its journey unscathed and had reached its final destination. Since then, the probe has been exploring the gas planet's polar orbit and providing scientists on Earth with important information on a regular basis. The Research Goals of NASA The goals of the research mission were that Juno should collect important data about the outer as well as the inner composition of the planet Jupiter. According to the mission, NASA experts wanted to find out what the core of the gas giant is made up of. But research into the composition of the surrounding atmosphere is also an important aspect of the space mission. Astronomers also wanted to find out the source of Jupiter's enormously strong magnetic field. But these conditions were not the only phenomena on the giant gas planet that were to arouse the interest of experts. The Mysterious Mega Lightning Bolts on Jupiter However, Juno is not the first unmanned space probe sent on a mission to Jupiter by the famous space agency. Already at the end of the 1970s, Voyager 1 passed through the orbit of the gas giant and took amazing pictures, which presented scientists with nearly unsolvable puzzles in the following decades. In detail, this refers to the gigantic flashes of lightning on the surface of the celestial body, which are distributed according to a conceivably different pattern than we are used to from our Earth. When lightning strikes on our home planet, the resulting radio waves can be measured in the megahertz spectrum. For a long time, however, such measurements could not be recorded in the case of the megabolts on Jupiter. Instead, the impacts mysteriously followed exclusively in the kilohertz range. Another mystery was the fact that the lightning on Jupiter occurred mainly at the north pole of the planet. The unusual flashes on the gas giant also caused headaches for the experts of NASA, because despite all the differences, some parallels between the weather effects on Jupiter and Earth could be recorded. According to the experts, regardless of the planet, lightning is a physical phenomenon which, from a scientific point of view, behaves similarly to radio transmitters. In essence, this means that lightning emits radio waves when it whips across the sky of a planet. However, as already mentioned, 
The signals recorded on Jupiter so far have been in the kilohertz range of the radio spectrum and are therefore in stark contrast to similar observations made on Earth. For a long time, researchers were in the dark as to how this phenomenon could be explained. The Technical Progress of Space Travel However, NASA's current Juno mission could help experts to solve the mystery of the megabursts on the gas giant once and for all. The spacecraft is equipped with state-of-the-art instruments, including the so-called microwave radiometer. This is a measuring instrument capable of recording Jupiter's emissions over a wide range of frequencies. The data collected with the help of this microwave radiometer, MWR for short, has provided important new insights to experts. On its first eight flybys alone, Juno recorded over 370 lightning strikes on the surface of Jupiter. During these recordings, NASA's space probe was able to record lightning emissions in the megahertz range for the first time. According to scientists, this could be explained by the technical progress that has taken place in the world of space travel over the last few decades. According to them, the Juno is now able to fly much closer to the surface of the gas giant than the Voyager 1 in 1979. And together with the more advanced instruments, our experts can therefore carry out much more precise measurements than 40 years ago. While astronomers were able to prove that the lightning strikes on Earth and Jupiter have some similarities with regard to their composition, the spatial distribution of the impacts on the gas giant in particular provided further puzzles. The lightning on Jupiter occurs mainly at the North Pole of the planet. However, the South Pole and the equator of the celestial body seem to be completely spared from the impacts. This circumstance stands in stark contrast to the distribution of lightning on Earth, where the corresponding impacts on the so-called Great Circle of our planet are truly not uncommon. What is the origin of the different lightning distribution? In order to be able to understand the different distribution of lightning strikes, it is first of all necessary to shed light on how the respective weather conditions on the individual planets come about. The weather and the heat on Earth are mainly influenced by solar radiation. Since the solar radiation is strongest along the equator, the absorbed solar energy rises there in the form of warm, humid air, which in turn can cause strong thunderstorms together with powerful lightning. This phenomenon is known in the world of science as convection. But what is the case with Jupiter? The origin of the Jupiter weather. The gas giant is about five times further away from the Sun than our Earth. Due to this spatial circumstance, Jupiter therefore receives 25 times less sunlight than our blue home planet. In contrast to the Earth, the heat on Jupiter is largely generated from the planet's interior. In simple terms, Jupiter thus has a sort of internal heat source that supplies the celestial body with sufficient energy, regardless of external factors. However, the low solar radiation could also play an important role in the formation of Jupiter's weather. Just like on Earth, the Sun's radiation is strongest along the equator of Jupiter. NASA experts assume that this low level of solar radiation at the planet's equator is already sufficient to prevent heat from being emitted along the celestial body's great circle. Since this effect does not occur at the poles of Jupiter due to the significantly weaker solar radiation, the warm gases from the planet's interior could rise into the atmosphere and cause violent lightning during convection. The Mystery of the Planet's South Pole However, even if this theory could explain the distribution of lightning on Jupiter, the thesis does not provide any information as to why the said impacts occur almost exclusively at the North Pole of the gas giant, while lightning at its South Pole is a true rarity. In order to solve this mystery as well, some research work is still needed. An important factor over the course of this research is the data collected by Juno. NASA's modern space probe is vastly superior to the now obsolete Voyager 1. According to this fact, the Juno is able to collect about 10 times more data than its predecessor probe. Thus, Juno was able to significantly correct the peak values recorded by Voyager 1 with regard to lightning strikes on Jupiter. Today, we know that up to four lightning strikes per second can occur on Jupiter during heavy thunderstorms. With this value, the thunderstorms on Jupiter are similar to the storms we know on Earth. We remain curious to see what further groundbreaking findings will be gained in the course of the Juno mission over the next few years. We hope you enjoyed our video about the mysterious lightning on Jupiter. Are you as excited about the mysterious events in our solar system as we are? 
We're already looking forward to your suggestions in the comments.